it's there's so many twists and turns mm-hmm. and but um but we want to thank you man uh, brock kelly in the house and um yeah. <laughs> i know you just made your debut on uh, how you waited how many months before you could actually talk about dude you weren't announced like three weeks ago we've been dying to have you on the podcast and i talked to publicity and they're like just wait because we're not announcing till like last minute yeah uh it felt like i wasn't even on the show like really other than just seeing you and and the other actors uh for the couple hours i'd be on set each day because it's so quick um it didn't seem like i was an actor on television because you know there was Swing very around. very delayed gratification it's finally here though so yeah it was kind of like doing wow. a feature yeah we yeah the wait for like ever totally totally um definitely just like you know trying to keep quiet trying to not post was a challenge because i'm proud of getting a job proud of working on the show and the work that we were doing and yeah. excited and uh you know, just had to keep quiet or else. <laughs> did you have a little There's viewing party when your app finally aired? I wish I could say I did. Okay. <laughs> um, but I didn't because I had an audition. So okay. I went to, I was in Santa Monica, I think, while it was airing on the West Coast. And I was getting texts, you know, from my mom and uh, other family members. So they were watching and they were sending me like blurry uh, videos right. uh, to my phone and I was trying to watch it but you know it's really blurry <laughs> I guess she has an Android so <laughs> she's you... got an iPhone. <laughs> just like recording oh. the screen just recording the screen yeah. oh, okay oh yeah. so cute though yeah, and screaming and all that stuff <laughs> Where, where'd you say you're from again mm. New Orleans New Louisiana. Orleans we've mm-hmm. never been there no like the two the two like hot spots mm-hmm. I feel well like these days I feel Austin Nashville and New Orleans are like mm-hmm. talked about like oh yeah and Atlanta yeah we've been there but we haven't been to Austin or New Orleans yet so we got to get there missing out really New Orleans, no other city like it it's how so oh gosh just just the energy there it's um it's a huge uh music town live music town mm. and big on food if you're a big foodies then you must go there because it's just there's so many different cultures that are uh blended there there's you know the caribbean african just southern and it's uh gosh it's you know it's one of those places where you should only be there three or four days or it could be a problem like vegas <laughs> yeah exactly it's a vegas in and out. In the south totally interesting yeah, we have some <clears throat> friends who just got back from there, and they are such foodies. And they're like, you guys have no idea. They would mm. send us all these pictures, my Canary and when they went. Yeah. And I was like, this looks so good. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's so go. good. I actually grew up in the restaurant business. My parents, they own Adolfo's Restaurant, which is a Creole Italian restaurant right in the French Quarter. And, uh, gosh, it's been there for over 20 years. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I grew up in, in the thick of, of – Frenchman Street, which is like, you know, one of the most popular areas in New Orleans for tourists to, to frequent. And, um, yeah, they have a live blues bar that's right under, underneath. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it was just like a really interesting place to grow up and just that, yeah. that, yeah. that, that vibe to be around as, as a kid, you know. Because huh. well, you're yeah. in the middle of the, like, the touristy part then. Mm-hmm. So it was never kind of a familiar like there was always new people and always things happening I mean, or know, are there, there off seasons of tourism? There's no off season, really. I mean, maybe like in the middle of July when it's just like, you know, dripping, sweat, humidity, <laughs> hot, you know, you're like walking through a jungle. But uh, other than that, there's tourism really happening all throughout the year. And there were neighborhood kids. So, yeah. you know, there was uh, people that, you know, we'd go to the parks and play soccer with or whatever whatever we would do yeah, <laughs> right? yeah i think we used to like do magic tricks when we were really young for for tourists like go around with like a little a little like traveling yeah. magic uh group i don't know it was, it was kind did of you crazy. hit them up for money of course all right i love it <laughs> hustling we, from we the beginning yeah we weren't doing magic for free Come on. <laughs> he's got a lot of hustling stories i know that we mm. had well because that's, that's the cool thing too is that there's a lot of people who come and go on the show, and I've told you this. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever had anybody on the show that I haven't gotten along with. Everyone's been nice. Sure. But then you hit it off with people. I feel like you and I slowly found that we had a lot in common, mm-hmm. and we kind of had the same vibe. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I, I feel like there's a lot of people in this town, too, that you'll run across that are just like, they just ooze, I'm an artist. Like, it's right. just like the energy so much. But sure. I feel like we were just able to, like, kick it. We yeah. talked about some real shit. We got to, yeah. like, get to know each other. Yeah. And, uh, 
so I just really appreciated like getting to know you and your professionalism and everything on set. So it's it's been cool. And I know we've been trying to schedule a double date <laughs> for like six so months. Long. I know. I know. You're, you're either out of, out of town, my wife's working, or something's happening. It's, it's, It'll make it, it that aligned, much. But it will. It well, will happen at some here point. first, so yeah. at least we got to do this intro, and yes. now we just have to meet the wife. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she's working, unfortunately. Baby she would have been here, but... Um, she, Where she were, or what she do? She's a registered nurse <gasps> at the number one... Trauma what? Hospital in Where? Southern California, which is in Torrance. So she, uh, she's a nurse. She's dealing with like gunshots and oh stabbings and just crazy, crazy stuff like down in Torrance, California. Um, whenever like the Coast Guard res- rescues somebody on a helicopter, yeah. whether it's you know out in the desert or like the mountains or out in the ocean, and they're bringing somebody, that's the ho- that's the hospital that they bring them to. So. Yeah, she's at a very, very busy hospital dealing with high trauma uh, patients. Oh, my gosh. To be in that industry, you have to be such a special human to be able to see and deal and keep your cool and calm. You know what I'm saying? Truly. God bless her. Yeah, right. What's her name? Adele. Adele. Mm -hmm. With with no E at the end. With no E. She she wants to (laughs) make sure Hi, Adele. Double date soon. (laughs) Adele with no E. Adele with no E at the end. She like, because, you know, she wants to differentiate from the uh, the singer. Did she did she want to be in in the trauma or did that just kind of how it just the, the doors opened in that direction? The door opened at that for that job because she was doing uh, cosmetic nursing before that, which is like you know Botox and filler and all those things at a medical spa, and uh, that was the first place she got hired after nursing school. And then this job opened up at the hospital, wow. and that's I guess that was only position open it's like a really high stress one so um she took it and she loves it actually i mean it's you know crazy in there she's always talking about i mean she can't really talk in detail about what what's happening but you know she's always talking about how their hands are full and just all the crazy stuff how'd you guys meet we met gosh we met we had mutual friends uh which is like kind of how we kept running into each other we she had a, gosh, I used to be a model, like, back in the day, and her roommate was the secretary at my modeling agency. Oh, wow. And um, she put in some words for me, and <laughs> we, uh, you know, we basically, we, we met at this lounge that I think our friend had, like, an event at, and we both happened to be there. That's how I met her. We started talking, really hit it off. And uh, the problem was, and I'm not telling this chronologically, which may sound like a little weird that I asked the secretary to put in a good word for me, but the problem was when, when we first met, we were both in relationships. So ah. we just kind of, you know, we're polite and just cordial, but uh, left alone. And then, like, we both ended up getting out of relationships later and kept seeing each other, and then that's when I put the word in. And yeah. Timing's everything. Stalked her and locked her down. <laughs> locked it down, dude. And you've been married for how long? Two years. Wow. Oh, yep. congrats. Two years. Got married. Thank you. Um, we were together for much longer before that. Sure. But uh, just finally got married because... It's uh, what you do. Yeah, so why, <laughs> why, I mean, it, it, after so long, you're just like, it. it's really just about like coming together to celebrate, you know, and, and just have the family and just have that, that, that ceremony. Um, and plus, you know, it's it was fun. We went to the Dominican Republic. We got Ooh. married there. And way to do it yeah yeah it was it was a great time so it was, was it a big it was a wedding for vacation no. or uh destination? it was a small we kept it small it was there was probably about 30 people let's say oh that's perfect oh, cool man yeah well congrats that's awesome yeah. man. you see you're building building towards the future and yeah it's kind of nice in this in this town too because things are so wishy-washy it's mm-hmm. like to find like a partner in crime yeah to go through these phases because especially in our industry everything's so uncertain oh, God. that it's just nice to just have like someone so you're not just like yeah, that certainty yeah to have, mm-hmm. to have that some that person you can rely on to just be there for you with you through the ups and downs and just you know 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 what to say and what to do to you know help you yeah. get out of whatever funk you're in or, or motivate you to keep you going once you're you gotta go and she's yeah she's That's great dope, dude. Mm-hmm. do you guys want kids <laughs> We do. Yeah. Um, not sure when, but we definitely are open to it whenever it happens. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. It's kind of how we are. I mean, mm. not like tomorrow. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, no, no. Definitely like we're not going to adopt tomorrow. Right, 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 <laughs> like right. That, but maybe adopt in the future. Uh, Love it. Yeah. 
Love that. <clears throat> How's the auditioning going? Because now that we're about to go on a hiatus here in a week yeah. and a half. Yeah, I know. So trying to line work up. Um, I did just uh, have a very busy two or three weeks. Um, got a movie f- with Mar Vista, which is a company I've worked with before. I auditioned for like the lead role of this film that they're doing, and they ended up thinking I was too young to have an 18-year-old daughter. So they offered mm-hmm. me the guy's, uh, the main character's best friend. Okay. So I'm shooting that. I uh, had a few other auditions, yeah, that, um, that went pretty well, but nothing yet. You know? <laughs> it's crazy. Is that what the beard is for the character, or is that just Brock's look right the beard, moment? Yeah, the beard, this is, uh, like I was saying, this is like my go-to community college philosophy professor look. You know, it's like Perfect. chill, down to figure it out, and talk about it, you know, if you are. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it, dude. I think yeah. it's a cool look. I like to. Sw- I, that's what I, I was telling you when we we're walking in. I'm. I'm. I'm that's one thing I'm excited mm-hmm. about with the hiatus is that I'm oh clean gosh. shaven all year. My hair is a certain length. Like I can't. Like sometimes you want to make a change with like your appearance, <clears throat> just for whatever you're going through in life, mm-hmm. or like you know. So yeah. I can't wait. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pull off that look at least yeah. a little bit, yeah, and dude. then we'll. Uh, we'll see what I. What I do. What was that. it like four years ago? He, I, I think it was like a year that you took off, and he shaved his head. <laughs> Didn't you shave it yourself? Nice. Well, I tried cutting it. <laughs> yeah. and I messed it up, it so work. I had to shave it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll never forget that day. I walk in, I'm like, what are you doing? I've done that too. I know how that goes. It's like you're just over it. And you just want to. Yeah. You want to reset. It's it's the old Britney Spears, you know. One hundred. You have to. You got to you got to do the Britney Spears every day. Britney every all day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it, dude. He's so jealous. <laughs> he, he wants to grow a big one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Soon. Soon. Yeah. It's going to be crazy, man. I haven't, like, having time off. Um, <clears throat> so I know that you were having, because you were working, where were you working before? Because you had an interesting job. And then, because that's, and then it's like trying to figure out what to do with your your free time. Mm-hmm. You know, it's. Yeah, well, um, acting really slowed down for me, like, I would say four years ago. And my wife was really doing well commercially. She, she's a commercial actress too. Um, but the thing with commercials is if you book like a all state commercial, you can't do State Farm. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't do competitors. So she had so many commercials running at one point, she really couldn't audition. And when I met her, she wanted to, uh, she wanted to be a doctor. And I was, I was, I like kind of derailed that and introduced her to my agent. She started auditioning, started working, and you know, fell in love with that too. So she started to uh, mostly do that and just, you know, drop dropped out of school pretty much. And um, once this, you know, all these conflicts arose, she had all this free time, and she was like, "I'm going to go back to school." So she went back to school, became a nurse. Wow. And like I said, acting was uh, not. It was just, it was really tough. I wasn't getting a lot of jobs about four years ago. And, um, I, you know, I was like, I gotta, I gotta do something to bring money. And, 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 um, I got offered this job as a broker at a commodities firm. And what that is, is, you know, we basically had clients where we took investments for metals or cryptocurrency. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was really, really crazy because I didn't have any experience. Uh, I, I met the, the people that ran it through this one guy that was helping me find financing for this script that I wrote. And he told me about this job. And I went there, and it was actually right down the street from where we filmed Days. And it's in a building that's shared with, like, TBS and Warner Brothers. So it's kind of, like, still in the middle of you know, the TV and film world, which was cool. Um, got a, you know, ran into a couple of casting directors and they brought me in for some things while I was in the elevator to, you know, to audition for. Huh. Um, but anyway, this, yeah, this finance job, it's just, it was, it was crazy. I was there for three years and what we did was basically took people's money that wanted to invest and hopefully protect their investment and multiply it over time. Hmm. Uh, like I said, I didn't know anything about it, and it was like a crash course and 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 you know uh, stocks and not that we did stocks, but like a lot of what what you do or or what we did was pitching against stocks, so you had to kind of understand you yeah. know yeah. where where they um where you know their their values and we uh yeah we were a very successful company and it just got to be to a point where I was so burnt out. Hmm. Um, 
but I got the audition for Days of Our Lives in year three of that when I, when I was at that company, and I was like at a point where I was I was very successful there, but I was going nuts. Like it, it just there was so much work, there was so much pressure to meet numbers, and yeah. there was also a lot of competition. You know, it's 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 basically sales. You know, so. There's, I was going to ask, so you'd find your own clients? Well, no, they, they contact us pretty much, and hmm. or they would contact us, and, you know, we would have to basically sell them on trusting us with their money. Right. And, uh, you know, um, it, it was a very competitive uh, company where everybody was in competition with each other. There weren't really teams or anything, so, you know, there were people that worked with people uh yeah that you know together but um for the most part everybody was in in competition with everybody but you could help each other make money if that yeah makes sense. Right. uh sounds like a ponzi scheme but it's, it, it's <laughs> no it's like wolf of wall street yeah, to me. Yeah, like, no, totally. any any like film or tv show that you ever see that has to do with like guys or girls in a uh in an office on the phones yeah talking with that. people about their money is, <laughs> is exactly is what you're totally doing totally legit like that's right. exactly what right. they're doing so um so i did that and it was just it was was not really for me right like to my core uh i i did well and i just i was going nuts and then this this opportunity with days of our lives came up out of nowhere Hmm. marnie she get marnie saida gave me my first job in la and on young and the restless like 15 years ago so she called me in for it and um well, I can't really talk about the character, but, you know, she talked about it a little with me, and I think I was just at a point in life where everything aligned, and yeah. uh, mm-hmm. it, uh, yeah, it worked out. Thank God. Heck yeah. <laughs> Amazing, yeah. dude. Mm-hmm. Congrats. Thank you. Thank Could you start, exciting. what was the, and I think we can definitely talk that you had, uh, Evan was not the initial name. No. We the, went through three. the character. It was, it was the Manny, right? I think one? it was Manny the Manny the Manny Manny the Manny at first, <laughs> and then um, he's a babysitter. There and was one other one. There was one other one in between. Oh yeah, there was. Uh, gosh, it, it was pretty bad too. Was it Doug, or was it like Doug? something like that? Yeah, it was just like a rand. It was just like kind of random. Like I feel like with with like yeah, and it, your last name hasn't came out yet, which I think we can mention. But that's also I've never heard anyone with the last name Freers. Yeah. Yeah, Freers. I Freers. I don't even know. Oh, that's the name. Evan Freers? Yeah. And it took me forever to be able to say that, where I'm like, oh, yeah, you know Evan Evan Freers? Like, you could, like, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's not, I've never heard of that name. Have you guys no. ever heard of Freers? It doesn't come off the tongue. It does not roll off the tongue at all. <laughs> so when I went, when I had to, like, keep, like, you'd mention him in other scenes, yeah. like, oh, yeah, you know uh, Evan Freers. He's, he's uh, you know, X, Y, and Z. Mm. Um but it all works out. You get used to it after a while. And yeah. What so. was your audition process like for that? Hmm. So I walked down the street because I literally worked down the street from, from where crazy. I auditioned. I walked over there, uh, sat in a room with a bunch of guys, waited my turn, went in there, knew all my lines, nailed it, and uh, just had fun with it. Humbly speaking. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's a pro. That's a professional talking, though. After this many years, it's like... Uh, <laughs> Well, so they call me, or she said right in the room, I'm going to, um, I'm going to call you back to meet the producer. And, uh, that was going to be Albert. So I think a few days went by, went, uh, went back again, waited in a room with a bunch of guys for my turn to go. And then I met Albert and, uh, I think, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I met Albert and then they wanted to see me do another scene that had nothing to do with the first one that I was auditioning with. And I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this specific. It was just a different type of scene. It was a different type of scene. Yeah. yeah. Did they ever end up yeah. shooting that different type of scene? Like, did that ever come to that fruition? That different type of scene was a character that's already on the show. Is that, is that okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. So, they, so they wanted to see what you had in the tank. They wanted to see what I had in the tank. And Got I, it. I emptied it. I yeah, did the tank. <laughs> Hence the reason you all are employed. Yeah, over that room. So uh, boom shakalaka. Yeah, Albert jumped up out of his chair and hugged me. I'd never seen that happen in my life. Wow. I was shocked. 
And uh, yeah, he was fired up. It was awesome. I was fired Love up too. Love that. Al- Albert's super passionate. He's, he's, he's yeah. an EP director. Like he directs yeah. some of the episodes, executive producer. But I mean, yeah. he knows every scene. He, he, like, come on, come yeah. on. You got to get that. Like yeah. he really yeah. coaches you. He, he wants you cares. to get this. Yeah. He cares and he coaches. Yeah, it's awesome having him there. So that was so cool when he jumped up and hugged me. And I, I like... I had a feeling that they were going to call me and I went back to the office that I worked and I was staring out the window. The, the window points directly at the Warner Brothers water oh, tower, my which gosh. is, which was so torturous for three years, just staring at it while I'm, you know, talking about things that, you know, <laughs> Bitcoin, <laughs> yeah, Bitcoin, <laughs> gold or whatever, uh, and why you shouldn't buy stocks and buy what we're, we're selling. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> um, and I was staring at it and I got, a phone call and I saw in the call ID who it was and I was just like I got this it. is it this is it dude if you got a hug and didn't get it mm. that would have messed with you you'd be on like a sales call being like you gotta get the gold because <laughs> if someone's gonna hug you you think you'd get it <laughs> wait sir what is that just listen go with gold bitcoin's fine are you crying sir <laughs> yeah, you crying he don't. hugged me you don't get it I got a hug yeah. oh he hugged goodness. me he hugged me <laughs> I'm glad he called me <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Good gosh. experience then overall. Totally. What was your first day like on set with everyone? Oh, it was really um, quick, I would say. I yeah. When I was first on the show, I think you got like several takes and oh. I think it were a couple rehearsals, but now it's like you're rehearsing or you block in the beginning of the day or, you know, when you get there, then uh, maybe one rehearsal before you mm-hmm. shoot, which they were generous enough to give me one my first day. And then... Uh, then they shoot it, which it was such a whirlwind, whirl, whirlwind for me that I, um, I like I, I didn't. I was like, "Are we done already?" Uh, when we were finished, I, yeah. I didn't realize we were already done. It was so so quick. So um, yeah, it was very quick for me. But other like aside from that, like everybody was so welcoming. And like yeah, in terms of the cast, the crew, everybody in here and makeup. So. They made it feel like very warm right when I got there and made it a good environment to step into. Good. Mm-hmm. That's so crazy. So you played two different characters. One you said a real long time ago. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And then now you play Evan. A totally different person. That's amazing though. I love <laughs> that that they could do that. I know, right? It's just it's it's so fun. Like just it's so it's so clever what uh, what they can do for so you know for so long they're they're able to keep people's attention for fifty four years yeah, is that dude. what it is mm-hmm. the Crazy. writing is is I mean you know it's so clever to you know soaps they get a bad name out there because uh, you know just they they do but like really the, if I haven't seen writing like you know on this level. I mean, I do see writing on this level, but like, you know, it's... At it's, that volume. Exactly. At that volume. Yes. Hmm. It's it's crazy. That that much dialogue and for it to be um, just great. And I think that's the thing that people need to take in consideration as well. <clears throat> when it comes to the actors and the writing, we're putting up a f- three feature films a week. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and yeah. what they do is incredible. And... But it's nice though to see someone because I because the the episode that aired your very first episode was that your very first day mm-hmm. so they shot it in order I couldn't remember they when did. it when it, was it um, right but you had a lot of dialogue too for your first day and first but day. you stepped right in dude I, I was watching I was like man he did because you know when you're in it it you you see it differently when you're acting with someone you're not able yeah. to yeah kind of do both but totally. I was watching the scene man you should be proud of yourself that was so good Aww. dude my mom uh, she recorded it so I'm gonna be going home pretty soon to visit either Thanksgiving or Christmas so I'll see that so first. you haven't seen it seen I haven't it? even seen it seen it oh I know my gosh. but I air again I think on the 18th and I'm definitely watching or at least I'm okay. going to record it I, I don't you know you can go what... to mbc.com too and wa- oh yeah, yeah yeah I think they hold I think there's like about a two week um oh I didn't know that yeah Okay. That's tonight. how I watch the first. All right. You'll you'll Check get you'll out. watch it tonight. Then. You can't fast forward Done. through all the commercials, unfortunately. Yeah. But it's uh, but it's a cool show. watch. And uh, I'll also um, you what? They have to make money. I get it. Yeah. Oh, they have to. <laughs> That's sponsors. Yeah, they really. Um, and then um, if you have time before we go, um, I'll show you like another mm-hmm. clip because they are. It's the Emmy uh, submission. Did you get an email about that? I did not. No. You you will be because you can submit for whatever, mm. uh, either supporting or guest star or whatever oh, cool. you want to do. Awesome. Um, and uh, but they give us some episodes in advance 
to really? watch because you have to look to submit. So I actually fast forward or I looked at like um, like November like twenty seventh. Oh wow! So I got Sneaky. a couple. So if you know the oh, episode, awesome. you can take a little. You can take a little. <laughs> it must peek. be nice to you know have uh, eight years under your belt, seven hundred fifty nice plus episodes. Yeah, they just Some you hardware. know they just send the me. Hardware? Yeah, <laughs> where's that Emmy? Oh, the hardware is out there in the there, uh, huh? in the living room. Yeah. <laughs> This way, when everyone comes over and we all sit around, they're like, uh, Emmy, I go, oh, oh, just sitting there. <laughs> just sh- sitting there shining. There's just shining. A, a rag for, for your guests to shine if, if they wait. Yeah, yeah, if you have to, yeah, you have to put a glove on to touch it. <laughs> I've actually done a terrible job. I, we never used like a, we need it cleaned. You know, we've, we've moved it and we've never. I actually, I cleaned the uh, table it's on the other day and I was like, I really should like wipe this off. So I wiped I don't it off yeah. with like a wet. I don't know if you can do that. <laughs> I didn't want to get too crazy with it, but I gave her a nice little cleanse. Yeah. Nice. Well, she's made the journey to each of our, our apartments that we're moving. Yeah, but, uh, all the way in Florida at one point. Wow. Yeah. yeah we lived in Florida for six months, and then... Uh, it's crazy. Florida. We yeah. moved back, yeah. Or, or You're not from there, are you? I am, yeah. Oh, South are. Florida, yeah. South Florida. And okay. we kind of just needed it it was that year when he shaved his head okay yeah. and uh we're like went, went nuts yeah so you went shaved nuts. my head you go to florida <laughs> moved you go to florida nuts. i've seen all the memes you're, you're yep. a florida man you went wild <laughs> we wanted to stay but yeah. we tried to be by coastal because he ended up working coming back again. to days they called me it was just too much three weeks before we had everything packed and days called me back and i was like yeah i'm gonna do i'm gonna do this and so i was like well we can do by coastal and it was just way too difficult yeah. so we got rid of the apartment um, but I'm, I'm actually glad though, cause I don't really want to live in Florida. No, I wanted to for a hot minute cause I was like, it's always warm there. Yeah. It's affordable. Um, but I, LA has just University's, always pulled me back and yeah. now I, I feel for the first time ever that I'm like, this is, this is going to be where we end up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know which city, mm-hmm. but within, within 30 minutes yeah. of this sure. area. County. You just need to, we just need to make more money. That's all it is. You know, totally. it's like, yeah. you gotta, you have to be like rich to live a comfortable upper middle class life where you yeah. can go to dinner and have a house mm-hmm. and, and not be stressing and not be oh, stressing boy. at the end of the month when the bills come yeah yeah <laughs> or having to maintain that kind of overhead yeah because mm-hmm. i never look at it with days it's like yeah we get paid well but i don't look at it as oh i get paid well and this is going to continue forever forever i go well i'm gonna get paid nothing when it's over one day so right. mm-hmm. it's it's hard to want to make those investments and then be stressed out about an $8,300 mortgage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> your, God forbid your air condition breaks or, yeah. you know, Yeah. What the hell are you going to do? Whatever. Plumbing, you know, whatever comes with owning a house. I don't know. Yeah. Yet, obviously, but you know, it's, uh, it's so expensive out here. Um, so that's why you, you have to have many, many hustles, many side uh-huh. hustles. You can't just, I mean, not it, you know, you want to just have acting as your main source of income and, and be able to, you know, even look at all the top actors. They're all doing things on the side to yeah, just bring to in some, extra money because, yeah. you know. You're just, Especially more than ever, I feel, with social media, mm-hmm. being able to, like, partner with brands or, you know, whatever it might be. I feel like it's more of a thing now that people want to do side hustles and partnerships yeah. and it's easier, I suppose. We have the opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So we'll see, but we're gonna keep uh, keep plugging away. We're always trying shit. That's why I loved your hustle on the sales, dude. Because we get it's it. just fun, dude. That high. <laughs> we were in sales for many years too. And, oh, you were. And okay. uh, yeah, we were. We did um, oh, right. network marketing for that's four right. years, right. full time. Anti aging. Anti aging, <laughs> and then technology. And, dude, you learn a lot, man. Yeah, yeah. You do. Just sales and just calls and calls and. Mm-hmm. Um, it was worth it, though. Do you feel you've taken some of the things you learned from that job, though, in your life? 100%. Mm-hmm. I'm so happy that I did it. Uh, it. You know, it was very draining, very exhausting. Started getting more gray hairs than ever before. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> I, uh, I just, I don't know, I just realized, like, the importance of connecting and, and just, you know, I don't know, just hard work, just being relentless and, and getting over adversity because, you know, there's a lot of no's, just like in acting. Mm-hmm. Just like in acting, yeah. there's, you know, I, I don't know what the numbers are, but they say there's like, at least where we were, it was like one out of 10 people, or one out of 100 people buy. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, you'd be going through like all these leads and, and uh, you know, just feeling hopeless, but like with velocity, <laughs> with, with, going through, with going through it as fast as possible and just getting over the past, which could be a person cursing you out or talking crazy about 
Obama being a lizard or whatever the hell people were talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or just being drunk, you know, and then just wanting to talk. And you're like, well, this person's kind of cool. I'll talk to this person <laughs> just because, yeah. like, I need to check out of my day. You know, it, it, it really, I don't know, it's just I think it uh, built character in, mm-hmm. in me, like, even as an actor, you know, because oh, yeah. now I'm just Heck like, yeah. nothing can really, I mean, things can get under my skin. If, uh, if Albert Alar hugged me and didn't call me back, I think that would hurt. But <laughs> That would hurt, yeah. That would hurt bad. It would cut deep, Albert. Uh, don't ever do that to anybody if you're listening. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it, it's it's really helped me just to be, like, on to the next with each acting project that, that comes to me, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'll go out there, put my best work out there with uh, preparation and just, you know, being focused and centered in the room. And then just kind of leave it, you know, let, let it go, really. And uh, I think that was probably something that I formulated when I was when I was doing sales. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dang, boot camp for boot everything. Camp. Yes. You gotta just build that rejection muscle. Mm-hmm. I think even after a while too, like <laughs> it's strong. You just get oh my god, dude. <laughs> with acting and sales, and you just get. I think it's anything in life, really, though, because even when we start putting out podcasts, like we're very blessed to have a lot of positivity, but you yeah. still get neg- negative sure. people and all social. And but I think after a while, you just get rejected and shit on so much Mm -hmm. that it becomes numb someone who doesn't put themselves out there that first time that someone critiques your work or Mm -hmm. leaves a negative comment or you get told no just destroys them because they never heard no yeah it's crazy (laughs) and i and i bet you with you dude it was much harder because you're trying to sell people on the sense of like look like trust me with your money yeah. and it's you're so going to invest here. So that's probably even harder than like, Hey, you don't have to believe it works. Just give it a try and let the product do the work. So we yeah. at least had like an easy way in and it wasn't like, Oh yeah, here's 25 grand. Put it into crypto, please. Yeah. Like, yeah. dude, that's, there was a lot of pressure and we, you know, we lost some money. We, yeah. we made a lot of money, uh, with some people. Um, so, you know, it's, it's tough when it's just, it's really, gosh, it's all about when you buy. You know, and that's mm-hmm. really what people don't understand when, when you're talking about like, you know, investments, mm-hmm. you want to buy low and you want to sell high. Mm-hmm. Problem is people start hearing about things from the media and that's when it's too late, but they're already hot to trot, they say, and they're like ready to buy at that time. They, you know, they're trying to catch the train before it's already, but it's already gone. You know, they're catching, they're catching yeah. the back of the caboose and they're like holding on for dear life as it's going over the edge. So it's kind of like the stock market. The stock market is like 27 plus thousand right now. And I mean, you know, I talked to a lot of people that are looking to in, invest in it now. And hey, there may be opportunity for growth because, you know, it, the, the economy's, you know, kind of booming right now. But how much higher can it go? You know, like sure. it's never been. I mean, it's probably not as high as it's ever been. It's, I think it's like 27,400 today. That's the Dow. And it, I don't know, the highest is maybe 27. 700 possibly I, I don't don't quote me on those numbers but you know let's say like it the dow increases by five percent okay so you get five percent growth that doesn't even cover inflation over the over a year and mm-hmm. they say inflation is like you know it goes up like six percent cost of you know goods is like six percent per year well what if the stocks say you, you dump a lot of money in there what if the stocks like you know they take a a big cut a big dip like like they typically do every 10 years you know what what if you're buying now to catch that extra five percent but you end up losing way more because you know it's it's overvalued which you know most likely is i mean where how high is it gonna go you know you think it's always the question though well if you did because you said they also did crypto Mm -hmm. and you were there four years ago so wasn't bitcoin pretty low then it was did you ever buy any I did, yeah, I did, and I lost a lot of money. We did too. <laughs> I we lost did too. a lot every of every day. We're in coin. But you didn't Come sell, on. right? Uh, I did, yeah, I did. Oh, you did sell. Okay, I sold because I needed to pay some bills, but you yeah, know, yeah, it's it's yeah. it's gone up uh, and recovered, but. Um, What's it at now? Do you invest. think? I think it's at like eight thousand okay. something, yeah. nine, eight or nine thousand. Uh, a lot of people that I helped invest in Bitcoin have made money because they bought when it was like at four. Of course. Yeah, and there was some people that bought, you know, at the at the peak, but uh, not mm-hmm. not many because I wasn't into it at that time. Mm-hmm. We bought at every level. We bought it. Yeah. We bought some at five thousand, eight thousand, ten thousand, nineteen thousand. <laughs> 
We're like, it's going up. Um, it's going to 100. It's going, we're making it's a million, million. It's going to go to 100,000. <laughs> yeah. I, I still think it, it could probably shoot up in the future. I don't know what's going to happen Maybe. with it. But, sure. Um, yeah, that was the thing about the crypto and the gold. People bought it to kind of get away from traditional investments like stocks or the U.S. dollar or, you know, other currency. They wanted to get away from the banking system. And that's also what gold does. It's just more ar- mm-hmm. archaic than, than crypto. Crypto right. is like the future, um, hopefully, the, 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 you know, the closer future rather than the distant future. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, but, you know, if if people held on to it and they continue to hold on to it, obviously, that's, that's, the, that's the long game. Th- those investments, you know, stocks, yeah. I think, can, you know, they're short-term, medium can be long too, but uh, you know, it, just holding on. Yeah, just hold, just hold, and buy the dips. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> sounds so easy, and then you get into it. You get like, into oh. it. You're mm-hmm. so stressed. That's why I just don't know mm-hmm. what to do. I'm hearing mixed mixed opinions on whether to buy a house or not when you break it all down, yeah. and you know, and you, it's like at the end of the day, it's like, what the hell do you really do? I, I just think it's that idea that it's if it, like in our generation, like, oh, we got to be ready for when we're 65 or 70 and it's kind of like the world's not even gonna be recognizable by then like i feel like continuing to just build a brand learn just pay attention to what's going on i think we're gonna keep climbing and make you know something will Mm -hmm. make sense i just right now we're just kind of saving because we went through like some more shit in 2015 (laughs) so now we're just very stingy we're like just like Mm -hmm. waiting until something looks like great valuable yeah, yeah. instead of rushing Definitely. it, we're just like, right. let's keep doing the work, keep saving the money, and just kind of wait for an opportunity that isn't a Hail Mary, like buying Bitcoin at <laughs> right. the time of its hype. Yeah. Um, I We would have made twenty grand if we'd have pulled out, mm-hmm. but I didn't want to pull out at fourteen, fifteen thousand. 15000 mm-hmm. I was like, no, it's going to keep going. So yeah. A lot of people did, though. That's yeah. the game you get into, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, no, mm-hmm. we're going to say, sorry, we're going to say Oh, uh, oh! I think we were talking about real estate uh, when we first when we first met each other in, in set, on set. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about like where do you, where do you see value? You know, if if um, the market has, happens to take a dip, you know, obviously uh, real estate is something that's physical, it's tangible. You can live in it, and you know, it's, it's, it's valuable, especially in California. So it could grow yeah. over time. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's, it's something like, uh, you know, crypto or even stocks, you know, you want to buy low, buy, buy a company or a product that is, uh, is undervalued and, and ride it up to, to the top. Mm-hmm. It'll all make sense in 30 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When we're 60 some years young. <laughs> hindsight. Yes. Hindsight. <laughs> oh my God. We have a lot of life to live, man. We're going to yeah, do a do. lot of fun stuff. I just want to have a good time, you know? Mm-hmm. Heck yeah, man. That's what it's all about, man. That's what it's all about. That's what we're um, trying to do. Before we wrap up, I don't know if you want to share this on the air, but it's a fantastic story. Okay, okay. <laughs> do you know dun, where I'm dun, going dun. with this yet? I don't. <laughs> I don't know if you've thought about it in a while, but um, oh god, have you ever been like forced off the road by a celebrity? Oh my god. <laughs> No. Wow. Uh, yeah, I have actually. Jeez. Yeah. Um, <laughs> God, I try to black this out. I'm still scarred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, jeez, right up the street too. That was uh, that was probably one of the scariest moments of my life. And it happened before. War. I remember you. You were pretty like shooken up about it. You were just yeah, like. Yeah. I think did it more just startle you? I, well, no one knows the story yet. Let's get into. Yeah, do, let's, you, do you mind do you sharing, mind sharing it, on, it on? I'll uh, share it. Yeah, okay. I'll share it. So uh, now he'll be able to find you though. Yeah, gosh, this is gonna be out there. But look, uh, disclaimer, please don't take this as like uh, a threat, bro. I, I didn't mean anything <laughs> when I honked the horn. It, it was just it, you were about to hit me, so I, I didn't want to. You know, I didn't want to get in an accident and deal with all that, but. About 7.30 in the morning, uh, a few months ago, probably four months ago, I was, I was, we were, sh- my wife and I were sharing a car at the time because mine was in the shop. I have an old 68 Camaro and it's always in the shop. So I was using her car and it's, uh, it's a brand new Tesla. And anyway, I was, I dropped her off at work and I was coming back over the hill. It was like 7.30 in the morning. There was nobody on the road except for me and two other cars. And I was in the right lane. There were two cars in the left lane, and there was a red light. I was coming up to the red light. It turned green, and the car that was behind the car uh, at the red light cut me off very quickly because they didn't want to wait any longer. And I was in my wife's Tesla, which is brand new. Didn't want to get hit. Didn't want to deal with an accident. 
honked the horn, laid on it like half a beat longer than I should have, you know, not that I should have, but just, you know, I was, I was a dick about it. So yeah. <laughs> I'm talking to my mom on Bluetooth, like on the, whatever, in the car system. I, I don't know. I don't My Camaro doesn't have any of that because it's old. Like the Tesla, you can just like talk to somebody and they're, their voice comes from the car somewhere. <laughs> so I, uh, I'm talking to my mom and all of a sudden I, like I, it's, it's a minivan that cut me off and it's, it slowly gets over to the left lane. I see a lot of demonstrative movement from the driver's seat and I'm like, what the hell is going on? You know, I'm looking over there and like all of a sudden the car slows down and gets next to me and it's Shia LaBeouf. And he is heated. <laughs> oh man, is he heated. And he's like going off. He is going off at like, a 10 or 15 you know and, and and i'm like what what the hell i'm like dude you cut me off man like what what do you what are you yelling at me for and he wouldn't go away he uh started <laughs> to swerve at me because i think you know he wanted to talk it out on the side of the road so i'm I, i'm like mom let me mom let me call you back i got i gotta do something <laughs> so i hang up on her and i roll down the window and he's just hollering on the top of his lungs i'm trying to talk to him trying to like you know be sensical and there's no talking to him. As you're driving. As we're driving Stop. down Laurel Canyon, a windy road. Stop. How is how are you next to each other? Uh, or he was just cutting in front of you, and no, then... he was. He, you know, we were just like going like that, you know. And he's oh and both oh windows are down, God. and he's, he's calling me every name in the book and telling oh me to pull over because you know I think he wanted to dance or something. And, yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is at seven thirty in the morning. Seven thirty. I didn't even have coffee. You know, me, my <laughs> wife and I had like a very great morning and just chill, relaxed, and all of a sudden I'm about to fight Shia LaBeouf on the side of the road. There's no one else out. We're definitely fighting to the death because he's the type of guy that's not going to quit. Yeah. I'm not going to get beat up by Shia LaBeouf. So like somebody's <laughs> going to be unconscious, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, we, uh, we, we get down to the red light or yeah, it was, a, no, we get down to the next street and he cuts over and he like puts his, his, his arm out the window and he's like doing that, like telling me to pull over. And yeah. I didn't realize it at the time. So I slow down and I look over. I'm like, dude, you're, crazy leave me alone and and he I, I, I drive past him he whips back on the Laurel Canyon and starts following me again and I'm like okay great this this is this is it I'm fighting Shia LaBeouf the next stop like it's it's gonna ha it's, it has to happen he won't leave me alone like I have to fight Shia LaBeouf now like I'm a big fan of this guy I grew up on even Stevens yeah, I, like I yeah. love Shia I think he's a supremely talented actor but <laughs> I was going to have to fight him. So I take my hoodie off because it was kind of cold and like I'm wearing sandals. I'm like, shit, this sucks. Like I'm about to fight in the street in sandals. Take those off, throw them in the next thing. We're, uh, we're, we're going down the street and he's, you know, calling me every, every name in the book some more. And all of a sudden he just, oh, I see like this dad walking with his two kids. One's in a stroller. The other's uh, like a toddler. And he's like, we're cursing at each other top of our lungs now. Like, I'm going to fuck you up the next stop, da, 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 and I'm, I'm giving it back to him. And <laughs> the dad's, like, looking at us so disgusted. Like, I make eye contact with him, and he looks at us so disgusted. He's like, so I'm like, and, like, I start, like, I'm like, you motherfucker. And I'm like, I'm now, like, speaking, uh, whispering curse words to Shia LaBeouf. And he makes eye contact that way. And there was a, there was a cop there. Hmm. And I was like, oh oh shit, like, are we going to be in trouble for speed? Like, I'm like, are we speeding? Are we driving erratically? Like, now I'm thinking like, we're going to get in legal trouble. <laughs> and I look, I, the cop doesn't notice. He had like his head thing on. He was doing a speed trap, you know, like trying to catch people speeding. I guess we weren't speeding. And I look back over at Shia to see what was up. And he, uh, he's just looking straight now. And we're coming up on like the red light. And I'm like, okay, well, the cop's gone. So like, let's see, is this going down? And he just... Didn't, didn't look back over my way again. It was the weirdest thing. He just was like looking down. He had the saddest look on his face. And I was just like, Jesus. What? It's it kind of weird. Like, you know, did he just like flash back to all the drama that he's kind of right? been going through or that was in, you know, several years ago? And um, wow. yeah, that was it. There was there was nothing else. I was, just, cause I was just making sure he didn't like come run up, you know. Yeah. Sucker punch me or anything. Yeah. The so he I just watched him and, I, you know, I wasn't trying to antagonize, you know, like start a fight right. you know, or anything like that. But yeah, he just turned off the street and that was it. Dude, that's wild. It was very strange. And I called up like a couple of my friends because, you know, he, he knows some of my friends. Some of my friends have produced movies that he was in. And you know, I told him, they're like, yeah, you know, he must be, you know, he must be going through something. And I was like, oh, I guess so. Poor guy. He just wants to be, he, he just needs a friend. Yeah. I just want, Shia, if you're out there, dude, and you're watching, I just, I'll just be your friend, bro. <laughs> we can let let all that uh, Laurel Canyon drama be past us, and you know, 
go play some basketball or something. <laughs> That's insane. Well, well, I'm glad nothing actually side, escalated because right? that couldn't have ended well. Oh yeah, no, if no, you would have actually fought. And are you are, are you a trained fighter? It it was gonna be to the death for sure. It was gonna be. He's a trained fighter. Fighter. I'm a train. I mean, look, I don't want to say I'm a trained fighter, but like I have training. You know. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He's definitely got training, so it was gonna be ugly. Oh my god. <laughs> god. I didn't want to fight him at all. I liked the guy a lot. Thank goodness yeah. you guys did not. I know, I know. <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf. You know, I'll fight him in a ring for charity. Like, uh, I'd, right. I'd fight him for that, you know, but I'm not just going to fight streets. him in the street to the death, dude. Like, come on. Were oh, you on your way to work? No, I was dropping my wife off to work. And... Oh, that's what I heard. Okay. Oh, you know what? I was about to start Days of Our Lives. It was like two days. That was the other thing. I remember now. Because I was like, okay, I just quit this finance job and i just got days because i got days of our lives i was starting on monday this happened on saturday it's like oh if i go fight this dude and we're like all like beating each other up like i can't show up to set looking like that thing I like thought, on my yeah. first day <gasps> on my first day so that was another reason i was i mean plus also I'm like why would you want to fight shia buff you know? <laughs> yeah those are the kind of people though like just with that kind of energy that i i would never mess with because those i don't know if you can you'd have to like yeah. actually knock him out right. to stop you're right they're the scariest to want to fight unconscious like the yeah. one of us was going to be unconscious yeah. if we fought and then there was no one else around so if i if it was going to be me who knows what he would have done to me while i was oh, unconscious no. Oh, no. especially if it was sexual i don't know what he's into no. <laughs> oh my god dude <laughs> I'm joking. no i know but i'm just saying like no, that was just intense. Dude, like didn't, that's something you don't hear didn't every day. Did he do no. a movie once? And he's such a method actor. He was dating this girl, and I guess they broke up because he's like, "Well, no, I have to sleep with the woman I am in the movie." Like yeah. he actually did, and that's why they broke up. Like yeah. he does some. I wouldn't put it past him. Some he's, crazy he, wild he gets, stuff. I, like I read about Fury, the movie he did with uh, Brad Pitt. Uh huh. He was like pissing on himself in the tank, just huh. just sitting in it for days or oh, weeks. Lord. Oh lord. Yeah. So. You know, he, he goes method. there. He goes yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you don't want to fight a guy like that. In other news, I heard his new film's amazing. <laughs> oh, have you seen Honey Boy? Oh, my God. The movie's incredible. No, I, I haven't seen it. I, I watched really Falcon, Pe- or Peanut oh, Butter sorry. Falcon. Yeah, that's what that I meant. One. Peanut Butter Falcon. Peanut Butter Falcon. What's the new one called? Honey Boy. Honey Boy. I haven't Boy. seen that one. I was thinking of I heard it's Falcon. great. Because yeah. that's based on his life, kind of? Right, right. Honey right. Boy is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Peanut Butter Falcon was the one I was referring to. Which is great. It's great. I didn't see that. Great film. So good. I think we own it now. I bought it. Oh, so you can watch it. <laughs> You're in for a treat. Yeah. You're in for a treat. It is quite the ride. I'll think of your story the whole time. Yeah, do it. <laughs> Never be able to see that it. That is the dude, for sure. That is the guy. That is a version of Shia that wanted to fight me. That guy. Really? Totally. 100%. Oh, goodness. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, um, that's a good story. And then story. we'll... Um, it, an hour always goes by so quick. Um, but uh, we got to set up a double date. We got to make yes. it happen before the year's end. Yes. We'll, we'll find a, a time to do it. And uh, I appreciate you coming on. And um, yeah, thank you if you so want to come back me. on later uh, when your storyline's picking back up yeah. uh, or starts to pick up and mm-hmm. we can talk about more, we'd love to have you. So That'd be great. That'd be appreciate great. you coming over, man. But I'll, I'll go show you some of those uh, future episodes. Yes. Right yes. Now. Let's go Sorry, watch. Sorry, guys. Let's All, right. <laughs> All right, everyone. All right, we'll talk everybody. to you later. Thank you.